Good morning. You should see now the screen title, Microsoft SQL Reporting Services, which brings me to my first bullet, which uh, means that's a mouthful to say. So I'm, for the purposes of this, I'm going to borrow an acronym that I saw somewhere and call it SSRS, which is not all that poetic either, but uh, at least I could fit it on the screen and say it. So um, that might not be official, but for this presentation, if you see SSRS on there, that means SQL Server Reporting Services. Um, Again, uh, what I'll do here uh, during this part of the session is give you a real brief overview, for those of you not familiar with it, of uh, just some basics about Microsoft SQL Reporting Services, uh, do a comparison in some areas to uh, how we feel it compares with Crystal and what we've heard from some of our users and colleagues in the industry, uh, and then uh, do a quick demonstration uh, to show you kind of the look and feel of it. Uh, essentially, um, Compared to Crystal, Microsoft SQL uh, Reporting Services is newer. Um, it's only been out for uh, a few years now, uh, but it's growing quickly. And uh, we'll get in, into some of the details of that um, in a little bit. But, uh, you know, a few years ago, we, we wouldn't really hear much talk from our customers. We get a question once in a while about it. But um, over the, the last uh, six months or so especially, we've, uh, we've heard this more and more and, uh, and been talking to, to customers quite a bit about it. So. Uh, it seems to be um, getting a foothold um, out there in the marketplace, and, uh, and we felt it was worth uh, talking about today. Um, one thing, important note, um, uh, that SSRS, the, the version, depending on what version of Microsoft SQL Server you're running, the version um, that comes with it will be different, which is not surprising, but um, just a, a note on that, because I'll be showing you some things today that you may not have uh, if you decide to try this on your own or if you've been working with it already um, on your own install. So uh, I'll get into the what version I'm running and, and what you may see uh, that's a little bit different uh, later, but uh, just take note of that. Uh, the last bullet there uh, is just a common question that I've had uh, when talking to people. Some people assume they can only go after um, data that's uh, in SQL Server, and that's not the case. It, can't, it, it doesn't have as extensive a library of connections um, as or built pre-built connections, I should say, as Crystal Reports does, um, but you can go after data that's not in SQL Server. Now, having said that, in our experience, especially uh, the audience that we have today, 90% of you are going to go after SQL Server data anyway, because that's where your Macola data and some of your other data resides. But um, sometimes there's access databases or other sources that we want to go after. So, um, just wanted to bring that up. Okay, let's get into a comparison of uh, SSRS and Crystal in several different areas. I have a few slides on this. Uh, one of them is cost. And uh, notice that I have in the first bullet there, I have free in quotes because it comes with Microsoft SQL Server, which if you're running that in your production environment, obviously you've paid for. But there is no additional cost uh, to SQL, ser ser uh, SQL Server reporting services uh, beyond that purchase. Now, there are uh, other uh, add-ons you can buy, distribution methods, you can, you can write, things like that. So it's not entirely free, uh, you know, a turnkey package, if you will. Uh, however, you can, uh, without any investment, if you just want to play with it, you can download it uh, as an addition with the Microsoft SQL uh, Express uh, edition that's available out there. So uh, it's, I'm running it on my laptop right now with the Express edition. It works great. There are some limitations to it. Um, Obviously, Microsoft wants you to eventually purchase the real one for your production environment, um, but it's, it's pretty robust um, in, in its ability to show you what its capabilities are. So uh, just a note on that. Uh, obviously, Crystal reports, there is a cost to that, um, whether you're, you're buying the, uh, um, the developer version or Crystal server, which I'll again mention in a minute, um, that those costs are pretty well known. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's not... Uh, to this point, it's been well worth the investment for a lot of folks because it provides a lot of value, and it will continue to, in our opinion, uh, for a lot of folks. But just uh, doing a comparison that uh, Microsoft is definitely trying to come in um, and, and compete on price, I believe, in that area with, uh, with SAP, the current owner of Crystal. Okay, the next point there, documentation and support. Uh, any of you that use Crystal know that it's very easy when you run into an issue or an error to go out to Google or Bing or whatever you like to use. and there are probably uh, hundreds or thousands of other people that have had that same, uh, uh, same error, and you can pretty easily find some information about it. Um, 
There have been some criticisms lately with uh, some of the official crystal documentation and support due to changes in ownership. I was talking to someone the other day that was a little frustrated trying to get the information on SAP's uh, website about crystal. So uh, I don't know. I haven't had a problem with that in my, in my own experience, but um, just wanted to mention it that there have been some some issues with that. So you know, a little good and bad there as far as crystal goes. On the uh, SSRS. Uh, there's definitely not as much information out there in the in the public domain. Not not nearly as many experts uh, out in the industry, if you will, that um, have posted questions and answers. But Microsoft, in my opinion, has done a pretty good job. Um, and some tutorials and things like that. So in, in my experience, again, pull up Google and type in what you're trying to accomplish with uh, SSRS or, or, or use the full name. And generally, the Microsoft website will come up in the first couple of hits, and, uh, and their, their documentation is not bad. So again, your, your mileage may vary, but that's been our experience uh, so far. OK. Get my slide to change here. Bear with me just a second. There we go. Uh, I wanted on this slide to show you a, uh, I mentioned before about the uh, that SSRS could access more than Microsoft SQL Server data. And uh, I wanted to give you a little visual comparison there where um, I did a screenshot for my own current uh, Crystal 10 install. Uh, I'm not sure if Crystal 11 or 2008 has any additional connections, but uh, you can see that there are quite a few more on the Crystal side compared to SSRS. Now, uh, that said, on the left, uh, how many of those are you really going to use with Crystal? You know, like Lotus Dominoes, uh, Domino, or things like that. Maybe, you know, not a lot of folks in our uh, industry tend to use those, but some might. Um, so, you know, the usable number of those might be lower than it looks like on the screenshot. And on the other side, there are ways that you can get beyond some of the uh, uh, the shorter list that you see there on the on the SQL Server side. Um, you know, the OLEDB has a lot of options that you can program into it, but uh, it, it does take more work where it's nice on the Crystal side that they have a lot of, a lot of those pre-built. So I don't know what the uh, what Microsoft's intentions are going forward um, with the additional connections, but that's, that's the story that we see right now. Uh, the next uh, point we wanted to talk about was uh, distributing the reports. How do you get, you know, you're, you're the developer of the report and you want to then obviously provide that report to, or the information in the report uh, to your customer, your internal customer more than likely, uh, for them to view the information. That's the whole point. Uh, and there are some differences in how Crystal and SSRS go about this. Um, one thing that we've been talking to folks a lot about this year and last year are, is that after Crystal version 8.5, you can no longer do what are called compiled reports in Crystal, where a lot of folks used to create basically a, an executable that they could then pass on to their end user. They could run that and, uh, and get the data that they need um, whenever they wanted to. Um, Crystal locked that down. Um, and now you have to either from Crystal or from a third party um, purchase or download uh, what we call a viewer. And uh, most of those, there are free versions of those, and there are versions that you have to pay for, and there are pros and cons uh, to all of those. We've recently found one that we like that happens to be free, or kind of a, a free version and a pro version, but it really depends on, on what your particular needs are. So um, we'll be happy to talk to you in more detail about that if, if you're running into that issue. Um, We've advised a number of folks already, just just this month actually, on, on direction there. So uh, um, if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask us about that. Crystal Server is also uh, an option. It, it's a very robust uh, piece of the Crystal family. Allows you to do a lot of things with uh, um, putting reports together, uh, security, distribution, things like that. A lot of folks really like it, but uh, there's, a, there's a cost to that as well. So that's a, it's an option um, that you want to think about. And, and currently on the Crystal side, there are a number of, of third-party options. Uh, Ryan mentioned some of those before. Uh, the uh, Event Manager product is a great way to distribute a Crystal report. Copernico that Justin will be talking about uh, is a good way. Uh, the Wysis um, that you'll also be hearing about later uh, has the um, 
Crystal embedded in it, so you can use Crystal reports in there. Uh, and and it, the list goes on and on. So just a ton of options um, on, on that side of it for, for getting your reports out to the people that need them. A little different story on the, uh, on the SSRS side. It has one really nice thing um, about it, that first bullet, it, it has built-in um, what I call HTTP services built in, and I'll, and I'll show you a quick example of that during the demonstration, um, where you can basically just publish your report out to uh, a website, and not a public website, just on your own web server internally, and basically it, it, it comes with it, and at no cost, you can then provide your users with a link to that report just through their uh, Internet Explorer browser. So it makes it real easy for folks to, uh, to access those. Obviously, there's security and things like that that you need to, to worry about there, but that, that's covered in the product as well. Uh, and another thing that uh, um, Microsoft's doing a nice job with is integration with SharePoint. I don't know how many of you folks use SharePoint currently or have thought about it, um, but uh, it, it does a nice job of integrating its reports into SharePoint. So if you're using that kind of as an intranet, uh, you can provide the uh, kind of a seamless integration there for folks to get the data. And there are other options uh, with SSRS as well, but, but those are the two main ones that I wanted to, to point out to you. Okay, moving on. I want to do a quick, uh, oops, slide hasn't moved. Hold on. There we go. I'd have my technician help me with that. Uh, PowerPoint's pretty complicated for me. Uh, quick interface comparison between the two. Uh, you know, every, again, we're assuming here everybody or most people are, are pretty familiar with Crystal, um, and the interface there has evolved. It's basically the same same look and feel that it always has been, whether you're using Crystal 8.5 or 2008. Uh, you know, the, the, to me, the screen looks like a piece of paper, and you drop your fields on there and, and, and do the things you need to do. Um, SSRS uses um, Visual Studio for its report builder interface, which for folks that haven't used it before is a big change, but for some developer type folks, that's a very comfortable uh, atmosphere to be in. So, you know, it could be a pro or a con, uh, and again, I'll show you that in a second to give you a, a look at it. And it's got that Microsoft look and feel that they, they sort of build into all their products. Uh, both products offer wizards. If you're a beginning user and you're not real comfortable, it's real easy to walk through the screens and set up your query and, and drop your uh, fields and your groups and your, and your sorts into the wizard and it, it builds the report for you. Uh, something we won't have time to show you today, but SSRS um, in the latest version has integration with Microsoft Word as an interface to build your reports in. Just be aware that's an option if, if you're intimidated by the Visual Studio uh, type of interface. And then in the last bullet there, I just wanted to point out some terminology differences that we'll see when I get into the demo. Visual Studio uses what are called projects, kind of a container to, to hold your files. Uh, Crystal Server has a similar type of, of model, but a lot of folks don't use Crystal Server. Um, and then just uh, another example of some of the terminology differences where Crystal uses, you know, for report types, they call them standard reports or cross-tab reports. SSRS calls those tabular or matrix reports, but really they're the same thing, and it's not, not too difficult to transfer your, your understanding from one to the other. See if I can advance my own slide here. There we go. Um, wanted to show you uh, one important difference for me when I was uh, learning about SSRS was the query builder. It was different. I, Crystal's was not bad. It, you know, it, a lot of people like it. It's, it's serviceable, but I, I felt a little bit handcuffed. I use uh, Microsoft SQL Server uh, Query Analyzer um, and Management Studio to build SQL queries. So for me, um, the Microsoft method is a more comfortable environment. And again, you, you may have a different opinion, but I wanted to just show you this as the it is the query builder within um, SSRS, and it's, it's the typical Microsoft query builder interface where I have my tables at the top. Um, and then I can do my columns and filters and things in the second section, and then it shows me the query uh, syntax there, and then I can preview and look at my results quickly and easily um, um, down below. For those more advanced, um, some of us like to write our SQL statements out in SQL Server um, and do some fancier things, and then you can actually copy and paste them right in here. It's very easy. Uh, to do that, and then that becomes your, your query within your report. So for some folks, that's going to be an advantage. For others, it might not, but wanted to point that out to you.